Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 207 of Report This Post, the podcast about bad posts and bad people. My name is Geiger, and that is Christian. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. And we're your hosts with the posts. Every week, Christian, myself, or your listener select a different topic. And then find horrible posts for your listening pleasure. This week's topic, as chosen by a listener named Evan, is the Boy Scouts. That's right. Those uh, little boys with the kerchiefs and the khaki. I, mm, I don't know if they're kerchiefs. I think they're they're neckerchiefs, I believe is what they were called. What? Isn't a kerchief just a type of neckerchief? I believe a kerchief is like what goes on your head, like a babushka sort of style thing. Like if you're an old Russian woman uh, with a. Well, I would say the, the neckerchief is the extension of the kerchief. <laughs> we'll talk about that in our kerchief episode. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the Boy Scouts. Now, what the hell is a Boy Scout exactly? Terrific. From the simple English Wikipedia, the Boy Scouts of America, or BSA, is an organization for children and teens with other 5 million members across the United States. They try to give people life values. This is such a great statement. They try to give young people life values. That's the, Uh that's the set. BSA includes Cub Scouts, which is for children ages six to 11, Boy Mm. Scouts, which is for youth 11 to 17, and Ventry and Sea Scouts for youth age 14 to 20. Huh. Boy Scouts BSA was called Boy Scouts and still started al- allowing girls in in 2019. Yes. Which will be a huge discussion in this episode. A lot of folks have opinions about the old girls being invited uh, into the, the the troops, as it were. Uh, this is I just found out that Boy Scouts. So there's the Cub Scouts, right? Correct. Yeah. And then there's the Boy Scouts. But the Boy Scouts are ages 11 to 16. Yeah, yeah. You're a Cub Scout till you're to turn twelve. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea. I thought Boy Scouts. I thought Cub Scouts was like babies, and then Boy Scouts was like five and up. See, I had zero experience. It was never, and it didn't know anyone that was in it. Completely. Oh, it was a TV thing for me. Tell you what, you sure do know somebody that was in Boy Scouts. Let me well, tell you, buddy. I don't want to know somebody, so. <laughs> Well, I was in Boy Scouts oh, brother. from the ages of about eight to, I would say, I think I was probably probably 16, 16 or 17 wow. by the time I was out. Um, uh, but I left. I left the Boy Scouts because I was uh, bullied a lot. Oh, uh, dear. So, uh, hey, Jesse Ogercheck, if you're listening to this, if I ever see you out in public, I'm going to beat the shit out of you for chasing me out of Boy Scouts, you son of a bitch. Um. Yeah, but anyways, it was really fun when I was in it. Uh, it was mm-hmm. cool to go to camp. It was cool to learn different stuff. I have, I still have my sash with merit badges uh, somewhere. I think I still have my my scout shirt somewhere as well. So, uh, I like to put that on and reminisce about the old days sometimes. I can uh, picture you right now. The lights <laughs> dimmed. The lights. Di- I'm crying. I'm I'm hitting myself with a, <laughs> with a length of knotted rope, just well, beating you're, myself around the body with, with the merit badge sash. <laughs> knotted that up. <laughs> just Walloping your real balls good. real hard with it. That's right. Yeah, that's what I like to do. That's how I like to think about my days in scouting is just uh, just committing violent acts of torture on my own body. Which thing about. Uh, uh, Greg Ogre, what the hell is the guy's name? Jesse Ogre, a man named okay. Jesse, a boy named Jesse. Wow, uh, was my mortal enemy. Uh, yeah, during my bullied by a life. Jesse is tough. That's a tough one. <laughs> Gotta say, <laughs> great, great. Yeah, I was never in it uh, because that would have involved any sort of 
uh, interest by me or my parents or anything <laughs> to do literally anything. <laughs> hey, Ma, hey, Dad, can I be in the no? All right. Wait, do I have to take you something? Yeah, no. <laughs> not no, not interested. Not interested. You can just here's a TV in your room. That'll that'll do you. Thanks, Dad. Hey, you turned out fine. Um, you're not off the hook. Uh, yeah. So all I know about it is just from uh, there was always every sitcom had a Boy Scouts episode. It seemed sure. like yeah. uh, every cart uh, Doug was joined the Scouts at some point. I'm sure all these. Sh- there was always a, an episode where uh, the writers for the shitty sitcom got to. Uh, write an episode in the woods where the boys got in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> and Simpsons. Boy, boy, I'll tell you, dude, those boys get in trouble. Well, we found out during this episode. Yeah. Well, well they, sometimes trouble came from all sorts of uh, interesting <laughs> places for those <laughs> intrepid scouts. Um, hmm. Now, did you discover any uh, such trouble? When I was in, no, other than just being bullied. And uh, uh, I believe at one point, I think one of my earliest camp trips, I ended up having to go, <laughs> go home at like uh, 10 o'clock at night, like the second day or something, because uh, the, <laughs> the older kids were telling ghost stories. And I got so scared. I Jesus go Christ. <laughs> you were, you were a 16 at this one. That's is that uh, no, I think it was eight, seven or eight, probably. Uh, so uh, that's fair. I mean, that's a fair thing for a kid to just be absolutely mortified. Yeah, sure. I was a really wimpy kid, so it it tracks. Well, uh, let's see. Why exactly did Evan, our dear listener, choose this episode topic for the week? Evan says, I mean, behind sports, I can't think of a better example of middle-aged men living vicariously through their kids. That's always a good time and hopefully less grim than some of the stuff you all covered. Mm. Mm. Boy. Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah, there's, there are some places on the internet we've discovered where there are guys who just spend all day talking about the scouts, which is a fascinating thing to do. (laughs) really can't imagine they got uh, a lot of stuff they want to say about it for sure yep now how did evan choose this topic evan went over to report this post.com smashed the buy topic button and he went ahead and purchased this episode with good old american money plus last week's episode if i recall it he sure did he did a two for yep. evan just emptied his coffers for us and uh mm-hmm. we thank him for it no. Uh, yeah, you can also uh, choose a topic by joining uh, patreon.com slash report this post. If you join at the mod level for 10 bucks a month That's and right. stay a patron for three months, you get to choose an episode topic or you can join at the admin level at 25 a month. And after two months of that, you get to choose a topic. It's great fun, uh, irregardless. Uh, you get because if you do join on Patreon, not only can you choose a topic, but you get the bonus episode every week, plus the full episode of this whole show every week. It's usually like an extra hour ish of content every uh, every episode, mm-hmm. plus the bonuses are like a half hour, so you get an extra ninety minutes a week. And Good guaranteed, we're God. saying the N word at least four or five times on those bonus and the the full episode. Yep. That thirty five minute marker comes up, and we're just boy. It's like deaf cool. comedy jam over here. We're just mm-hmm. we're being like Bernie Mac. <laughs> uh, Bernie, that's now that's a guy who had a sitcom where they probably did go to the Boy Scouts in one of the episodes. <laughs> I can picture that. that was, you can was just one picture of the few Bernie Mac episodes with white with white characters on it. Yeah, that's right. And the uh, the the oh boy, you can imagine the kind of golly Josh G G Wiz characters he would have in that. <laughs> These these white people crazy. Oh, I can't do that. I shouldn't do oh, that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Guess you guys oh, don't have to wait until the bonus episodes for that one. Hey, Man, I was thinking, what is Bernie Max? Oh, that sounds. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Mm, boy, <laughs> sure does. That's exactly what he sounds like. Uh, may he rest in peace. Now, anyway, why don't we go ahead and uh, get started? I think we should start. Uh, we'd mentioned there's um, uh, forums where people dedicated to. Oh yeah. 
breakout talk. So why don't we get started with that? I can do so. User Basement Dweller, great snag, great. <laughs> went to the boards at scouter.com, which is the largest internet forum for Boy Scout discussion. Mm-hmm. Went over there to ask, so what do you do if a scout tells you he is gay? Hmm. A lot of discussion on this one, but user mm-hmm. Scoutfish replied with this. First thing I would do is make sure I heard him correctly. Truth be told, I don't understand it, mostly because I never went through it myself. But then again, when I was around that age, people didn't try to judge whether you were homo or hetero based on what songs you listened to, what style of clothes you wore, what kind of car you drove, hairstyle, etc. Back then, you either were or you weren't. Bisexual wasn't even a word in my area, unless you were talking about those little frogs that could spontaneously change their sex. I don't understand that one either. As far as I'm concerned, until he turns 18, he is not gay, nor is he straight. Matter of fact, as far as I'm concerned, he has no sexual id or orientation. He is not a straight scout or a gay scout. He is just a scout. Not a single bit of advice matters without knowing the person personally, or at least as well as you may know this boy, his personality, background, quirks, etc. Like me asking advice on what my wife might mean when she says X, Y, Z and how I should handle it. It all depends on the wife. Mm-hmm. But from what I can tell, you went about it the right way. <laughs> Great. One of these guys who just will go on and on without saying a goddamn thing. <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't even have bisexual. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you wanted anyway. to be bisexual, you had to go walk six miles uphill both ways. Yep. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell you. I have no advice for you. Great. Thanks for wasting my time. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Zero input on this one. But uh, it sounds to me like you did. Uh, by the way, no other. There was nothing else to this post other than just the question. So I don't know how it's like. Yes. Uh, yeah. It sounds like you did great. <laughs> I'd say you handled it perfectly. Like uh, I don't think so. Seeing as how he's on a forum asking for advice. And he didn't say anything. So, yeah, yeah this is classic. Every single time one of these boomer guys does one of these posts where they don't say anything, they always do bring up. Uh, the difficulty in talking to their wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, uh, my wife says X, Y, Z, and I'm like, ABC, I tells you, you know, it's like, okay. Why are you bringing her up? Why is it? Why are you talking? Why are you? Always <laughs> first thing? My, my wife's a real, she's a real ball and chain, but I, but I tell you what, I love her. I yeah. do love her. <laughs> Gosh, do I, I would be, oh, I'd be nothing without Debbie. She's yeah, a real well, you know, bitch. Though. Yeah, she's an absolute cunt. But goddamn, do I love that complete <laughs> slag of a whore. Uh, hmm. cool. Yeah. So, uh, uh, another gentleman named Scouter ninety nine posted this thread over on Scouter dot com. Okay. Homosexuals are not pedophiles. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. The headline grabs you. Uh, <laughs> are all homosexuals pederasts? No, but all pederasts are homosexuals. <laughs> and the Boy Scouts has always been and always will be a fertile hunting ground for them. When experts say that scouting is a target for pedophiles, they are speaking in an erroneous vernacular sense of the word out of ignorance of political correctness. A 14-year-old is not the object of desire for pedophiles. The BSA is a fertile hunting ground for gay men of particular tastes, and even for gay men who might mean known harm because, as David Bowie so eloquently put it, <laughs> love is careless in its choosing. How many of you have fallen head over heels without ever setting out deliberately to do so? Hmm. It is because of this willful ignorance that I hold those who would force homosexuals onto the BSA in particular to stay in. Because they put at very real risk the lives of millions of young men, burning them on the altar of politics in defiance of reality. Mm. I do not hate gay people. I am at this very (laughs) moment sitting 10 feet away from a gay man. He is my little brother and I love him. Always will. We'll never tell him he is a pervert or any such. And I hope he lives the happiest (laughs) life anyone can have. I do not believe gay people should be persecuted. I have never been a macho man. I have been bullied as hard as any gay kid because as far as the bullies were concerned, I was a gay kid. I'm a bachelor <laughs> today. And as far as many of my scouts and fellow leaders are concerned, I am gay because I fit too many of their stereotypes about what a gay man is. <laughs> Homosexuals deserve the same privacy that anyone else deserves. 
but their desire for acceptance does not entitle them to infringe upon the liberties of others. I'm a classic liberal and conservative. The freedom of association is fundamental to all freedoms and to the dignity of individuals. Gay activism works in direct contravention of that principle, and that is why I find it outrageous equally or more so than the argument for safety. It is not responsible to open the doors to gay men. Hey, gang, smooth sack summer is slowly coming to an end. And if you haven't been scaping for the summer sun, it's not too late to sweep your sack of those pesky pubes. As summer winds down and autumn approaches, keep your boys clean and fresh just in time for fresh ball fall. The leader in below the waist grooming is here to make sure your pubes feel smoother than a beach ball. Start the new season the right way and join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code REPORT20 at manscaped.com. Hey, the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to keep your jewels bejeweled. <laughs> Inside this package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your precious goodies. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multi function on off switch that can engage a travel lock, and wow. it gives you the ability to turn on a 4,000 4, K LED spot when needed for a more precise shave. And this bad boy is waterproof. That's right, gang. Now that your sack is smooth, lather up with Manscaped's liquid formulations to get that fresh ball fall freshness. The Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant keeps your pumpkins from going rotten. The Soothing Aloe Vera Formula is the best in the business for below-the-waist freshness, and the Clear Drying Formula keeps your sack looking and smelling good. Your girl won't care about her pumpkin spice lattes when she's got your pumpkins to enjoy. (laughs) Um, Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their performance package 4.0, which is the Manscaped boxers and the shed travel bag that'll bring your comfort to another level at home and on the go. Keep yourself groomed from head to toe with their Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. This kit includes stainless steel nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. With the performance package, your balls will be ready to impress, but make sure you cover the rest with the Shears 2.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code REPORT20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code REPORT20 at manscaped.com. Keep things smooth and fresh as we say sayonara to smooth ball summer and enter fresh Fresh ball ball fall. fall. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. What a lot to unpack here. I have to say. of a post. Yeah. Uh, uh, now I don't think gay should be treated differently. However, now, mm. <laughs> now let me say this. Uh, also, I, I love gay people and many people. <laughs> I myself I'm a bachelor gay. and a, a boy scout leader. <laughs> <laughs> That's a troubling side. <laughs> no, I, many would, pe- no, I mean, would not like the idea of just some 40 year old guy. No family, no kids. Just like, yeah, I'm going to be a boy scout leader. Uh, you know what? It happens more often than you would think. I, I and especially a guy who's like, you know, I have a lot of thoughts about the gays. <laughs> let, me, let me outline them here for you. Uh, yeah. Also, um, the line here, uh, I'm a classic liberal and conservative. What the fuck does that? <laughs> so which one well, is it? It's, you- this is uh, one of those. So the tr- correct, the uh, original definition of liberal is like closer to what the conservative, like it's one of those you're going by like old school textbook okay, definitions sure. where like no one would actually consider this guy to be probably either one of those things in <laughs> any traditional sense. It's like, yeah. yeah, that's me. A, a liberal conservative. So. Mm-hmm cool yeah 
A lot of opinions. Uh, weird bachelor guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't just, get it. I'm just sorry. It's like going on. Like, where, where does... <laughs> just like the idea of like... I think I'm going to log into scouter.com and just write about my thoughts on that homosexuals are not pedophiles, but all pedophiles are homos. That is, I do want to bring that point <laughs> yeah. up. Just as long as we clear the air on that one. I just really have to make sure that that gets on. Well, thanks, <laughs> Scouter99, for that. Hey, speaking of things like that, this one comes from Reddit. My first sexual experience was in the Boy Scouts of America. Ask me anything. I am an Eagle Scout. When I was in sixth or seventh grade, hard to remember now, I was very open about the changes I was experiencing with my friends. One friend, I'll call him Dan, was also open to the things I was saying. While we were camping and sharing a tent, I told him we only live once. Why not mess around while we had the chance? To this day, I don't know why I felt that way at the time. It was a strange combination of Catholicism, being terrified of death, and being a strong-willed kid. We ended up having several sexual encounters. I came in his mouth at one point, which made a lasting impression on him, I'm sure. <laughs> we stopped talking in eighth grade. I was always an outcast anyways until high school, so it was easy for him. We ended up going to high school together and carpooled for all four years. We Ooh. never spoke of it again. After graduation, I have not seen or talked to him six and a half years. Ask me anything, and I hope I can make sense of this together and we learn from it. And a uh, now deleted user replied, damn, that's really gay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> First of all, why did he, why did this guy say I have a friend? I'll call him Dan, and then he never calls him Dan in the rest of the book. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just say yeah, I have a friend. Uh, have a friend. His, his, here's his full name. His yeah. actually Dan is his full name. <laughs> just call him uh, the fourteen year old you blew a, a <laughs> load into their mouth, <laughs> which I'm sure had a lasting. You think? You think so? Yeah. You think that had an impression on him? I, maybe. What's the like that he kept carpooling you for a while after that? <laughs> Can you imagine? <imagine? laughs> <laughs> that like that has to be on both of their minds every single day <laughs> that they're together. <laughs> Here he comes, the guy that blew a load in my mouth at Boy Scout camp. <laughs> gonna get into my mom's minivan. We're gonna ride twenty minutes to school together, and I have uh -huh. to think about it the whole time. Yep. Oh man, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Uh, and uh, yeah, despite never talking again after se seemingly best friends for a while, probably, probably good, <laughs> probably for the best. <laughs> Yeah, don't know. Never had any experience quite like that. Never, nope. I never never chugged a friend's cum. <laughs> what? What hey. are you doing this weekend, huh? <laughs> it is a it is a three day weekend. Hmm? Plenty of days for, for spunking. <laughs> no, hey. no no labor here, folks. Tell uh huh. Found a thread titled "Boy Scouts Membership Down Sixty One Point Three Percent in the Past Two Years." Posted over on greatawakening.win, the form for QAnon <laughs> believers. Brief history of the decline. 2013, Boy Scouts in banned on gay scouts. 2015, let's in gay leaders. 2016, the Libs report Boy Scouts doing great after ending gay ban. 2017, announces it will let in girls will allow them to attain Eagle Badge. 2018 changes name to Scouts BSA because it now lets in girls. 2019 girls officially start being accepted as Boy Scouts. 2020, the Boy Scouts of America said this week that the organization would create a diversity and inclusion merit badge and make earning it a requirement of becoming an Eagle Scout the highest scouting rank. User Crunchybyte said, It is just the Scouts now. Girls and homos are all allowed to join. <laughs> My sons were in the Boy Scouts when they were young. I was in the Scouts when I was a boy, but I would not allow any kids to join that poofter club that was once the Boy Scouts. Oh, man. Uh, PBY1000 said, they should sue the judge in the United States for allowing homos in. <laughs> okay. 
And then user uh, Josie Montana made this cryptic post, a message from the great scout master. The wages of sin is death. That is all. Mm. Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs> so, someone has to be their own version of Q on this website, I guess. <laughs> the, the great scout master. It's, yeah, it's actually the Q for scouts. Uh, so, yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't get it. Uh, so at uh, no point in this timeline is uh, did they uh, uh, point out that in the past two years something called COVID happened, which uh, had a big fucking impact on Boy Scouts membership. Nope. It's all about the gays and uh, diversity and inclusion there. Well, I mean, gay. I mean, COVID is a gay, <laughs> the gay virus. That's a good point. I did forget that. You're right. Uh, poofter club that's a good one i like that <laughs> poofter is that's uh, such a good word it's what a too bad thing. it's probably wildly offensive yeah well wow. turns out all the great words are actually <laughs> slurs they are they you know what slurs they really are speaking of poofters this one comes from the data lounge which is the forum all for gay guys my partner wants our son to join the Boy Scouts. He says the experience is more important than our feelings. And I'm worried that our son is going to be, I don't know, influenced is too strong a word, but I can't think of another. What are your thoughts on the Scouts? I was a member in 1983, but was just an excuse to smoke pot behind school with the older boys. Uh, here's a reply. If the kid is straight, he will likely enjoy it for a while, then drop out when the other kids his age get tired of it, too. If he is gay, he will find some fuck buddies and experiment sexually on campouts. Either way, good times. Or he'll get bullied out of it. Option C. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was I would say this post is uh, not uh, not good uh, argument against the uh, anti homos guys <laughs> from the previous post. <laughs> Yeah, your kids are gonna be get, wind up getting fucked by other kids on the. It's either he's either gonna hey, smoke you know what? pot he's... or get railed out. So and yeah, either way, he's gonna be having a great time. Yeah, <laughs> so he's gonna be sucking buddies come or sucking down doobies. I love nothing more than to get together with the boys and suck down some doobies. Hmm, <laughs> just hits the spot, you know. That and my best friend's jizz. <laughs> just, not sure. Not sure which one's better. But, Can't uh, hard to tell which one goes down smoother. But damn, <laughs> bottoms up. Hey, this one's uh, from the subreddit R off my chest. Basically, the scout troop and I go into the wilderness for a single night camping trip. Mm. During the day, we tied knots, built sh shelters, told stories, and then ate multiple chili dogs with Mountain Dews. I believe that to be the catalyst of my situation. Later that night, I'm awoken in my tent by a tremendous urge to vacate my bowels. <laughs> like it needs to happen now kind of urge. Back then, I was young, probably 12, can't remember, had a fear of the dark so I can't go out to the outhouse, which is a few hundred meters away, without my flashlight. That's pretty far away, by the way. Uh, I began frantically searching my pack for the flashlight. And at this point, I am beginning to sweat. I can't find it. The urge is growing and I'm getting scared. Then it happened. I started soiling my long johns. I'm on all fours searching for a flashlight and it is literally filling my long johns. I keep searching and eventually one of my troop members wakes up. I'm assuming it's because of the smell. And he asked me what I'm doing. <laughs> With a shaky voice, I tell him I'm about to go to the outhouse, to which he responds, great, I have to go as well. And he grabs his flashlight. I sneakily grab another pair of long johns and stuff it up my shirt so he doesn't see. I didn't want him to ask me what it was for. On the way, he just keeps asking me if I farted. I nervously laughed at him, so no, but it sure does smell bad. Must just be how nature smells. At this point, I believe he has become suspicious. All the while, shit is leaking from the bottom of my long johns, but it's dark outside, so he can't see it. When I reach the outhouse, I storm into the stall and make the mistake of sitting right away. I have now smeared the poop, which covered 100% of my butt cheeks, all over the seat and almost slipped off. Now I begin to frantically wipe my butts, my butt, legs, and seat. 
He probably asked me at least four times what was taking so long, and I was still too embarrassed to say why, so each time I would just say, just wiping, and nervously laugh again. After about 20 minutes, I am clean and slip on the fresh pair of long johns. I ball up the old ones and step out of the stall and immediately throw the sold ones into the trash while saying, I don't actually like these ones. (laughs) I look him in the eyes and he stares back. At that moment, I knew that he knew exactly what happened. He was a great guy. He knew my secret, never said a word, saved me from great <laughs> embarrassment. I think about, I still think about how nice of him that was to this day. Oh. Yeah, that's, that is about his nightmare, absolute nightmare situation. <laughs> I was going in there, just wiping, just mm-hmm. wiping. It's just here. I'm polishing the seat and everything. It's like, all right. I don't know what's going on in there. What is this? This is sl- sloshing down the path. <laughs> so yeah, when day broke and there's just the shit footsteps. <laughs> that does sound like something that happened to the boy scout camp though. Just somebody. And, but I got 12 years old. And you're too afraid to go out in the dark. It's pretty. That's especially if you're, you're Filling your long johns with turds, uh, man. <clears throat> Boy, that's rough. That's rough. But Philly dogs and Mountain Dew, though, that sounds awesome. That sounds that's a, that's, like a great yeah, combo. What, yeah, what wouldn't you want to eat uh, at a cookout? Mm-hmm. <laughs> probably uh, Philly dogs that probably haven't been cooked quite long enough. And Mountain Dew that's been sitting out for far too long. But uh, yeah. Boy, it just you know what? It hits a spot. Tan chili <laughs> over a fire with hot dogs that are either not cooked at all or cooked for several <laughs> minutes too long. Way, way overcooked. Yeah, there's just like char all over the hot dogs. So you're just, your shit's just black. It's just black water falling out of you. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, that rocks. All right. Well, hopefully those guys, uh, <laughs> at least they can continue talking on like <laughs> yeah. our other, our other guys that had experiences so far. <clears throat> God damn. All right. I decided to see what our pals over on stormfront.org thought about the Boy Scouts of America. Sure. Aryan beauty 17 poise po- posted. The Boy Scouts of America are about to follow suit with the Girl Scouts by letting gay youths and leaders as well as transgendered youths into their programs. Mm -hmm. I guess the Boy Scouts of America have decided to abandon everything that their organization stands for. I have to say I'm pretty disappointed, but I do sympathize considering that they had not done so. The group would have probably been forced to forcibly disband it. I've always wanted my future children to be in an organization that teaches them survival skills, especially one with a lot of history behind it. Mm. I am very sad that the Boy Scouts organization has been destroyed. Do you guys know any of any other organizations that still uphold tradition? Do you guys know if there are any alt-right organizations for white use mm. that teach survival skills? <laughs> if so, let me know. And uh, Golda Tapiro replied, Come Scouts and Weeblows used to be an alternative. Unfortunately, not anymore. There might be su- survivalist organizations which have such programs. If not too harsh or impatient with kids, that would be an ideal place for them. Traditional Boy Scout dogma doesn't include arranging bug out bags and hardening homemade arrow tips on an open fire. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, bug out bag. That is a. That's good. Yeah, you don't those you don't see kids wearing those. Uh, not not the, not the little scouts. No, no uh, tactical gear typically. <laughs> no, you do see a lot of uh, of army surplus stuff. But yeah, I guess that makes sense. I've always wanted my future children to be in an organization that teaches them survival skills. God. Don't even have why? kids, and you're already planning. <laughs> yeah, but like, why? Because <laughs> like uh, the, the things that I'm I'm planning on doing are for sure they're gonna have to <laughs> they're gonna have to to really make up for it. So. Yeah, 
I feel like you just was I feel like the clan would probably do stuff like this, right? <laughs> the, Not the to give these guys any <laughs> tips, but like it's I could picture the like clan children doing camping and stuff like that. You know, they need to know how to start a fire. We do know that. And certainly they're uh, not tying. They could really, really learn a lot there. <laughs> Clan Scouts of America. That's what we need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go ask our friends over at Stormfront that we wholeheartedly endorse, of course. <laughs> no. as, uh, many folks nope. online have discovered. Nope. Hey. Uh... <laughs> All right, we're going to stop right here because we're going to finish the rest of this episode over on patreon.com slash report this post. That's right. If you enjoyed this first 20-ish to 30-ish minutes of the episode, you'll be happy to know that there's about an hour extra of this one over there uh, on patreon.com slash report this post. Head over there. And all you got to do is subscribe for five bucks a month. You'll get every single full episode with dozens of more posts a month, plus an additional bonus episode every single week. Unbelievable. This is literally millions of posts that we read on the air uh, every single month, possibly billions. I have not counted. In fact, I can't count. I'm actually illiterate as well. But irregardless, patreon.com slash report this post, and we'll see you over there, and God bless.